Welcome back, everyone, for another exclusive episode here on the TCG Party Podcast. Today's episode is just going to be one two-man power trip here, so it's going to be your boy Fortress and your boy Giovanni. Oh, what is up, Kevin? Not much, not much, not much. A lot of things have been happening in this crazy week, hasn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, we got some uh, Daniel, Bryan, Daniel Bryan sightings. We got, you know, a brand new mobile game, Pokemon Unite. Online simulators of the new craze. Man, it's just pretty, pretty big on news this week. Indeed it has. So let's go ahead and get straight forward. Let's just get straight to the wrestling. So to some of our fellow fans who comment me back, you know who you are. Would not like to hear the wrestling, but I don't care. It's wrestling. Let's get it straight for it. Our main topic here for the wrestling folks, the biggest signings ever from the WWE are now entering the AEW world. Daniel Bryan, aka Bryan Danielson, the American Dragon, and CM Punk are signing in with AEW. Daniel Bryan has already now made his full contract and will make his official debut on September 22nd episode in New York, where my brother will attain and he will go ahead and see the great and powerful Bryan Danielson. Of course, this also has big negotiations right now with major talks with CM Punk. He is not fully contracted, but that doesn't mean for the fact that he is still coming closer to AEW. However, news flashes came out around. So what's going on with CM Punk's contract, Gio? Oh, apparently, WWE got wind of CM Punk basically almost signing on that dotted line, contacted him, and was like, hey... You know, we want you and all that, and now it's and now it's turned into a bidding war for apparently probably the hottest free agent in the wrestling world. That's true. <clears throat> CM Punk has been one of the biggest eight free agents ever since his classic tenure modem of the pipe bomb and him winning the WWE Championship at Money in the Bank. Sadly enough, they never once mentioned CM Punk during the Money in the Bank pay per view. Have you noticed that? Oh yeah. I kind now that you bring that up, yeah, I kind of just noticed that. Like, I get he's not in the company, but, I mean, come on. The guy was still around when he was doing one of those smacking talks, but this is one of the biggest stars that helped change landscape during the time when WWE was at its lowest time during 2010. When his pipe bomb came around, it was just really huge. And then the fact that he was not only a one-time, but a two-time Money in the Bank winner. You know? He, he was also on backstage, you know, and people thought that maybe he would come back and wrestle because he was on backstage, and that never happened, but, you know, uh, Fox apparently liked him a lot, so, I mean, there's some, there's some might be some, uh, maybe Fox pushing for it, you know, to put him on SmackDown, and, uh, get, you know, because that's probably their best written show of the, um, of Between Raw and SmackDown, so maybe they're just pushing for that. There were a lot of talks going on from the words from Jim Cornette, because he hears a lot from CM Punk, who he has respect, that CM Punk basically uh, didn't really want to come back to wrestling because he knows how everything has been now a joke and so scripted, it's just not like what it used to be. But at the same time, you know, CM Punk making a huge comeback for the first time in years is really huge. Like, we've been dying to see CM Punk wrestle ever since he left in 2014, the day after the Royal Rumble. This was the biggest talk, and then later that year, he had a big podcast episode with his former best friend, Cole Cabana, in a two-part episode where he explains why he left and what was in one of his main reasons with the company and why he had a lot of issues. And I feel like as though, you know, Phil Brooks needed to get this um, comeback soon, and we've been dying to see CM Punk back in the ring. It, I mean, he made a promise during his pipe bomb. He says, hell, I am not only need to come back to the ring. I can go back to New Japan Pro Wrestling or Ring of Honor. Even though he never went to New Japan, he can go to New Japan and then make something fresh. Like, people wanted him in Bullet Club, people have been dying to see him in AEW. Kenny Omega himself is actually appreciated to talk about these two guys. Now, both CM Punk and Brian Danielson are two of the biggest stars in the independent circuit during the days of Ring of Honor. But they were also have another name together, known as the Kings of Independent, because of their their styles of wrestling, their styles of mic work, and their and their creativity that they put it into the wrestling world. Like, you need guys like these. And later on, they both became world heavyweight champions in late 2011 when Daniel Bryan won the heavyweight title with the Money in the Bank briefcase and CM Punk winning the WWE title off from um, 
Alberto Del Rio at Madison Square Garden Survivor Series. So both men got to be their world champions all the way through WrestleMania until Bryan lost the belt in 18 seconds to Sheamus. But Daniel Bryan... I mean, yeah, go ahead. Del Rio's never coming back, speaking of people that are never coming back. Yeah, we, we don't talk about uh, cancer here. Now, <laughs> now, Daniel Bryan also has been one of the biggest stars as well as the build-up. While CM Punk was already done with his uh, big title reign for a champion for 434 days. Meanwhile, Daniel Bryan's fan base has been picking ever since he's worked with Kane and Team Yes, 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 yes. It's That's been the storylines with him and the and what, what do you call it? The corp, it's like their version of the corporation. It was the um, oh the uh, the authority. The authority with Triple H, Stephanie, Vince McMahon, and all the other guys preventing uh, Daniel Bryan to still be WWE champion, even though he won the belt twice. And then by the th his third time, they pulled the Benoit Bret Hart moment combined in WrestleMania 30, winning the belt and actually having the biggest moment in history. Not only got to beat uh, Orton and Batista, but also beat Triple H at the same night. Three members of Evolution. So that's actually pretty huge for the fact that Daniel Bryan has gone this far. And sadly enough, uh, injuries came about with like the neck injuries and then the concussions. So, unfortunately, he wasn't able to continue, and he already retired. But he came back two years later and at WrestleMania 34 to take on Steen and Generico, a.k.a. Owens and Sami Zayn. It, so, you know, it's interesting. I'll give you a different angle that most people aren't talking about. You know, if uh, they get to Brian Danielson and AEW and they get CM Punk, do we also get AJ Lee and the Bellas to follow? Okay, no, we don't want the Bellas. I know that, but I was more saying more AJ Lee than anything. What, but, you, what you mean to say is Brie Bella, because she's well, the one who she's the one who's married to Daniel. Yeah, that's true. And but well, AJ Lee, I don't know if she wants to continue, but if she, I mean, she can help with the women's division. I mean, that'd be great. You know, like I, I was thinking that the other day. I was like, you know, this would be really cool if, like, um, more so on her part, if she came back. You know. Um, the one that's married to uh, Daniel Bryan, if she came back, that would be cool too. I mean, I'm not opposed to anything, but just the fact that we would get a two-for-one type of thing. It's not, you know, instead of a one-for-one. One. And, um, I don't know, shaking things up at least. Okay. You know, I think that's what, uh, what they, they really want, you know, headlines. They want to break news. You know, they want a pop. They want a wow. So imagine if we got more than just them. I was thinking that the other day. <clears throat> I'm just not really a huge fan of the Bellas. They were never that fantastic wrestlers. They were awful in the mic. They had that terrible TV show. They never got over. And the fact that they're in the Hall of Fame, it, it irritates me because I've seen better women wrestlers who can be part of the Hall of Fame. And I feel annoyed that these two are in the Hall of Fame for no fucking reason whatsoever. Plus the fact um, that they also ruined AJ Lee's longest Divas Championship reign with Nikki's, yes. and Nikki's even worse than the other two. Well, both, Brie's not that good wrestler, but nobody even likes Nikki. Nobody even likes Brie. The only reason Brie's going to get support is because she's Daniel Bryan's wife, and that's about it. But nobody even yeah. likes Nikki, especially the fact that she was with John Cena, and John Cena even blew her up because John Cena can't really hold a freaking relationship. Uh, well, yeah, that's that's also true. Especially when, uh, and especially when he did that proposal at WrestleMania. Yeah, fuck you, John Cena. Ba, ba, da, ba. Shout out to Paul Heyman. Ba, ba, da, ba. You know, that was a good that was a good promo on SmackDown this week. <clears throat> I mean, good the fact that we all, that John Cena came back Money in the Bank and became the biggest pop was not a good real pop. It was just oh, we're desperate. This show sucked, and only two good matches came about, which was the Rhea Ripley Charlotte Flair match, which sadly enough Charlotte had to lose the belt to Nikki Ash on the next episode, which is stupid. And then uh, Roman Reigns versus Edge. Uh, again, a couple more interferences, which Roman Reigns does in every freaking match, which pretty much takes away the idea of him being a powerful man. Because I don't care if he... I mean, you can have a cheater a couple of times, but you don't want to do it in every pay-per-view because that just that's just like sour taste in the fans' mouth, guys. That just bores you. Just, you already know what's going to happen. It's going to take the fun out of it. And I mean, I did, I, I kind of knew that Cena was gonna come, like, come back. Uh, and I was muted while we were watching it. I was like, oh my god, imagine if John Cena, because like they kept going to him. I was like, wait, there's something gonna happen. And then, you know, 
it's interesting. We're, we're going to see, you know, how far they can uh, take this angle with uh, Cena and Reigns and all that. I mean, I don't think it hurts Reigns in the long run. I think that they're trying to add on to this blood, bloodline storyline, and uh, it's probably the best thing that they have going on their on their on their brand. <clears throat> Yeah, but if they do make Cena the heel type that they're trying to build, like, how's mm -hmm. that going to work with Roman Reigns? He's a heel. And you can't make him a baby face because he's doing heel. Oh, type. no. I do not want Roman Reigns to ever turn face ever again. But then you, you, know, you, you can't. But then we're going to have. Oh, so you want John Cena to turn face, but sorry, state face. But then when he goes. But when it comes to the match, he does a heel tactic, turns heel, and then makes Roman Reigns a baby face? Could. That could. They could, and then the fans will be like, oh, you know, I mean, anything to get Roman more over than he is probably seems what they're trying to go for at this point. Yeah, but, <clears throat> yeah, but the problem is where we've already had to the point in wrestling where there's too many heels now. Now that it's like there's too many heels, like baby faces are very difficult to obtain. So you're not going to have like your Daniel Bryan pushes, your CM Punk pushes, the, like underdog styles. Uh, you know, like, uh, yeah, I mean, look at Drew. He was on fire, and they kind of ruined his push. So, well, I mean, well, he didn't do well. His face push didn't do much as anticipated. He was over. Nothing wrong with that. And I love yeah. Drew. And I love Drew Galloway because he's a really good fucking worser. But I, you know, I wanted to see him as a face, see how that worked. But it, his face work wasn't as exciting. You know, it's not because it was mm -hmm. the, during the pandemic. But it's, I think it's because of like how his face run wasn't really obtained because he's more of a heelish kind of guy. But then again, in TNA he did try it out. But I think it's how they booked it. Because sometimes it's, even if the wrestler does this real hard and he can't be a good babyface, it's how the booker can provide to make that babyface. And they can tend to do that so it could hurt the wrestler more instead of having the bookers blame them. That's true. That's very true. Oh, I was going to ask you, since you mentioned that god-awful Bella show, you know, the Miz's show people all seem to like a little bit better, but... I'm not a fan of them. I can't stand the Miz. Hey, man. Appreciate his grind. No, I, I won't. He sucks. <laughs> uh, hey, man. I never thought an MTV star could make it this long in WWE. I'll say that much. He was on MTV. <laughs> Yeah, he was on, um, let's see, uh, I believe it was uh, Real World or Road Rules, one of the two shows. Yeah, that's right. where he comes from. So, you're telling me an MTV star is a former WWE champion? Yes. Fuck this company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he comes from that. Yeah, that's it. He came from that, He and he even, if you um, were able to obtain the clips, he, he shows the outlines of making the Miz character on them, and then he went and developed a little bit more, and then he just got his shot at WWE, and he's been there forever. Dude, seriously, fuck this guy. I hate him so much. And then now we also have Cody Rhodes doing his show coming out later this year. It's like, pre it, and you have to like, and you can tell it's like been recorded already because you see MGF there, and this is before MGF turned heel on Cody in 2019 Full Gear. Hmm. So they've been doing this for like <clears throat> two years now. <clears throat> uh, MJF is cool. Cody Rhodes, not so much. Cody Rhodes, hey. well, Cody, yeah, Cody has been lately been doing bad with his booking and all that stuff. But, um, so with Aleister Black here, Andrade's here, and then you're going to have CM Punk and Daniel Bryan coming into AEW, man. AEW is going to have a, a roster of great phenomenal talent and they're taking things to the next level especially now back on tour so the fans are marking out everyone's marking out people are ecstatic to hear what's going to happen <clears throat> in fact brian danielson's contract was also revealed stating that he's going to have the same amount of big payments he got from wwe with less uh wrestling so he has time to recuperate his body so they don't do house shows and he also has a, a contract where he can also work in japan so he can work in like other japan companies like new japan all japan noah you know and he gets to do all his stuff whenever he wanted to so he gets to do all his wrestling styles once again and I, I, uh, I, that's I mean, pretty good news i mean <laughs> i do miss the ring of honor brian dance i've watched all those matches he had including his rival with Nigel McGuinness. Oh my god, it's so good. He is such a great damn wrestler. 
you know, I see, he, like, everyone, to, like me, consider him seeing as the next Chris Benoit because of his technical skills. You know? <clears throat> mm-hmm. Not via headbutt, not just the crossface, like, he has incredible technical skills. Like, I ranked Daniel Bryan number three on my top ten uh, technical wrestlers of all time. Uh, he's really, really good. <clears throat> Couldn't add much to that, but uh, I, I I like his work from WWE. His so. work was great, you know, and his build up for an as an underdog is incredible, especially their uh, WrestleMania promo package. I, I loved it. He, he is over with the fans. He could have been the next babyface in my point of view if it wasn't for the injuries, because I know he had the capabilities of being the top guy. He could have, uh, j- just like when Ziggler got injured during his push. It's like you get that injury, they just stop pushing you. It's, I don't know. It makes me, yeah, it makes me sad to see good stars get wasted and then they become hated forever. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. I mean, at least they gave uh, Robert Root to Ziggler now and it's kind of salvaging whatever they left him in the dust, but still. But, but yeah. well, no, well, to me that's sad because Bobby Root is a very talented wrestler and he worked his way in TNA. And it yep. sad me that he gets... To beer! Be- money! Yeah, beer money, Team Canada... His rivals with Eric Young, his rivals with James Storm, you know, he was the longest world champion still to this day in TNA history with his with his original reign of 256 days, because there's never been a one-year champion in TNA at this at that time, and mm. he's, a, he's a hell of a worker, hell of a promo guy, he's multiple-time champion, he's great, he's a great athlete, but I feel like they wasted his potential. They were going somewhere and they fucked it up, especially at WrestleMania 34 when he when he didn't get to keep the U.S. belt. Yeah, they built him up. He was going somewhere, and now it's uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, they're building Samoa Joe back up apparently. So I mean, it's interesting to see where the former TNA guys uh, are going. I mean, AJ Styles has always been over, so you know. Yeah, AJ Styles is already at the point that he's almost done. He's going to retire soon, but, you know, I mean, I'm not going to diss that AJ Styles didn't get a major push, so I'm not going to... You know, yeah, no, I mean, AJ's done everything he needs to do in the company, and he's helping Amos, or, you know, right now, and, you know, that's fun. At least, you know, it's better than being in purgatory. So. Yeah, and he also makes other people's matches look fucking good. Uh, yes, that was in person. Although, if, if I wanted to, AJ Styles, before he retires, I, I say, fuck it, leave WWE, go to EW, have a match with Kenny Omega, boom. Ooh. There you go. Okay. Oh, that's, so, enough, that's enough of the wrestling talk. Let's go ahead to our next category. The, I believe that. And I believe that's going to be the Pokemon Unite video game, correct? The hottest MOBA out right now. So... Uh, you know, I was never big on League of Legends, you know. Same. I have a couple of friends that, uh, you know, um, one was offered a collegiate spot to play League, and, an, and I had another friend that ran an esports team for League. And um, and I would just watch, and it, it was it was, was alright when you watch the people that knew how to play, but um, I was never interested in all this. But Pokemon Unite just takes MOBAs and... I don't want to say it dumbs it down, because I don't think that's the word. Because I think it's um, e- it's like a easy to play, hard to master type thing. But it it's a really fun game. It's not boring. Like you could play it, and you're just having you're having a great time. You know, um, everybody on my playlist that like I have so many Smashers on my list, but I just see Pokemon Unite, Pokemon Unite. I had like seven people on. They're all on Unite. So, like, this game has hype right now, and it's it's very interesting. Uh, what do you think of it, Kevin? You know, I don't know if you ever played a MOBA before, because this is my first MOBA I've ever played. <laughs> mobile? Well, wait, you say mobile or mobile? MOBA. M-O-B-A. A MOBA. Yes. Okay. What the fuck is a MOBA? League of Legends, Smite. You mean, um, you mean one of those games that just, like, crashes? I mean, like, I mean, I know people are going to be like, oh, well, he just told you the whole thing, you idiot. But I'm just asking, like, MOBA, because that's, like, a word you don't really hear. Uh, oh, yeah. It, it, it's it's um, pertained to, um you know, the two games I just ran. Trans League of Legends, my, I believe, Heroes of the Storm is also a MOBA, okay. you know. So, basically, um, just... cl- so Clusterfuck fights, then. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, that that type of yeah, it's it's similar to what Pokemon Unite is trying to do. Yeah. Okay, so in comparison, this one at least it's not as clustered. You only go up to like around five uh, Pokemon to battle against another five. Or if you want to mm -hmm. do quick matches, you could do three to four, or you can do your rig matches with the five. Um, it's fine. It's not bad. It's pretty decent. It's just starting off well. It's already been downloaded like a, from a lot of people, and mm -hmm. it, and if you already got that already download, you get Zoroa, and he's already broken as hell. I mean him so much. So broken. He's so broken. It, like if you have a good one on your team, and he just team wipes the other team, you just go. You get so far ahead. Especially when you combine it with the uh, the attack HP, where uh, attack uh, sorry SP, uh, mm -hmm. where if you only for a couple seconds you're gonna you make his uh, attack speed and attack uh, boost for uh, ten percent I believe, and then when you combine that with all his um, with his move sets or his specialty move set when you press um, ZL, you go ahead and do a massive combo on all your your opponent's Pokemon. You know, and it's kind of like a little bit like basketball too, because you're just trying to shoot the hoops to get the points. You know, trying to take over their, their um, what do you what do you call those little things? Uh, they are called the um, their energy like uh, platforms. The, yeah, which is they're called? like en they're energy orbs basically. Yeah, so we we'll just call them hoop platforms. So yeah, so the hoop platforms you make it in. Depending on which team you start off in, either purple or orange. I, I'm in team purple, Jill's in team purple. Uh, so we just go, you fight them off, and you have like five different types of styles for the Pokemon. You got your melees, your defenders, your range. Range. What else we got? So, um, a lot of want to say all around. I don't think that's an actual thing. Range attacker, um, def defender, su support one. I believe support might be one, and I forget the. I think all around might be the last one. So, you have the five categories to choose from. I I chose Pikachu as my starter. I'm kind of happy that he does not suck. Yeah, because I, I chose Charizard because you gotta be the Charizard fan, and he's a little bit slow for me when you go into when you evolve to Charizard. Uh, the best ones I used were by far that I only obtained is the Zorora and the uh, Lolan Ninetales that you get. But oh mm -hmm. my god, last night, before I went to bed, I literally ended up playing with um, the Slowbro for the first time because they took my Zorora and Ninetales and all I have is either Charizard and Slowbro and I just did Slowbro but I should have picked Charizard. We still won, but mm -hmm. oh my god. Like, Slowpoke is terrible from the beginning. Like, Slowpoke gets a bit better. Um, yeah, that's fine. But from the beginning, though, you want to get, you want to take the advantage so that you can harm your opponent. I mean, all he does is Water Gun and just snooze himself to get more life. But it's not even good enough. He's terrible. He's awful. Like, the best defender to have is the Snorlax. He does massive amounts of damage. You know? Oh, he's the, he's the best tank in the whole game. I exactly. Like, Bowser as the best, uh, um... Be a heavy fighter in Smash because he's still he's not too heavy to move. He's uh, very effective. Mm, yeah. Okay. I'm looking here at the game right now while we're talking. So, yeah. So it's basically. So you have your your. Oh well. <laughs> Sorry, because I'm trying to look at and how they. Standardize the change. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so it's okay. So your purples are all arounders, your reds are attackers, which I've called them the Pikachu you have. Uh, the purple ones where the Charizards is. Um, your greens are defenders, your blues are the speedsters, which is where Sabrora is in, and your yellow is support. Mm hmm. And uh, Wigglytuff is a good support. It's a pain when you go against it because of its sleeping ability. You know? Yeah, they have. They all have uh, really nice, annoying features to some of them. Yeah, so three of them are Wigglytuff, Eldegross, and Mr. Mine. All three of them are incredible. Uh, though, yeah, and I also have a question. It, be honest with me, mm -hmm. 100%. And I want people to understand this too. 
is the main reason you see Jigglypuff in this game a lot, as well as Jigglypuff when it first came in Smash back in 1999, all because it was a fan favorite during the anime? Uh, you know, I don't know. Because if you remember that little Jigglypuff that nobody has ever saw ever again from the original uh, uh, Indigo League series, where it came out and you had a microphone, it sang, and then it had a marker and draws on your face every time you fell asleep. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's true. That only lasted like two seasons, and they forgot it. It never, ex I don't remember. I probably have to rewatch the whole series, or they have to show it in Japan. But they never explain whatever happened to, to that Jigglypuff. It just disappeared. It happens, man. It happens, yeah. But in all fairness, the game is not bad. It's pretty decent. It's free to play. It's standardized. But it is like a little bit like the mobile games. You do got to spend certain monies on that type of gems where you got to like buy the gems so you can use it just to buy off the Pokemons you need because it requires like uh, tickets and gems, which I think is kind of a ripoff because the highest it go for is 7,100 gems for 100 bucks. And I'm, not mm -hmm. gonna, and I'm not that stupid to spend that unless I'm rich to and wouldn't give a fuck. But still, that's not enough. I mean, you know, some people are saying is it pay to win, this and that. Um, we'll, we'll have to see, you know. I think people need a little bit more time with the game to, you know, come to an, a, an assessment, you know. Like, I'm not going to say that. Like, I, it, there, I, there are some things that it looks that way, but, you know, hopefully... The game, they let us grind for the things that we want. You know, I have like about eleven thousand coins right now. I could purchase someone if I wanted to, but I'm learning the game and making sure that like the people that I choose or within my play style are people that I like. So yeah, so I'll explain who all the Pokemon's are. So for your Pokemon's, I'm not gonna go by the other. There's Tyab. I'm just gonna say what the name is. Okay. So you got mm -hmm. Venusaur, Charizard, Alolan Ninetales. Slowbro, Zorora, Machamp, Garchomp, Crustle, Cinderace, Pikachu, Wigglytuff, Gengar, Mr. Mime, Snorlax, Absol, Lucario, Greninja, Talonflame, Eldegos, and Cramorant. Those are all the Pokemon that uh, are participating in the game. Uh, so, if you are wondering when we might see future DLCs, I already predict the first one has to be a Mewtwo, because Mewtwo is not only fan favorite, but it's going to be the one that you need to require to get. And, obviously, since so we only had the first uh, two of the three Cantonian starters, why not add Blastoise? Because I know he is going to come later on, they just haven't, I just haven't seen him yet. Mm, yeah, they're coming later, they're not out right now. Yeah, because I think during the training you face a Squirtle, but they never, they never really show you the Blastoise. Mm, I mean, yeah, we know it's there. Uh, I guess we'll eventually get it. Uh, okay, I also predicting Gardevoir, another fan favorite. She's very, mm -hmm. she's a very powerful fairy psychic. Mhm. Mm uh, who else would I like to see? What, 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 which Pokemon would you want to see besides Mewtwo, Blastoise, and Carnivore? I'm thinking. That's a really good question. Uh, oh, can we get Salamence? Salamence? I know we have Charizard. Or Dragonite, like it was another oh, dragon. Oh, that's right. We can get Salamence and Dragonite. Mm -hmm. But we got a lot of Cantonian Pokemon. Let's also think somewhere else in Jota. Oh, because we only because Aurora is the only Legend Pokemon. Um, let's put in one of the Beast Pokemons in it, like Raikou, Entei, or Suicune. I know people would prefer Raikou the most, as he is the most powerful one. But to me, I'm always gonna pick my boy Suicune because he's the best. It'd be great. The dogs, you know, they're all. I wouldn't mind. I mean, I, I Suicune would be great. Entei would be cool. You know, Raikou would be cool. You know, any of those would be great. And then, um, oh, um. The, we also need the, the Hoenn starters because they're the best as well. Sceptile, uh, Blaziken, and my boy Swampert. Hey, I wouldn't be opposed to those either. Oh, give me Eevees and all the Eevee evolutions. Yes! Please. Eevee. Please. Well, obviously they're going to do Eevee. Yeah. 
But I don't. But they're probably not going to give him his evolutions because if you have Pikachu, he doesn't evolve into Raichu because they keep him as a Pikachu. Oh, uh, well, they might give us a low hand Raichu. You know, little curveball there. So. Um, I mean, I don't mind that. Well, we could do that, but I know they never want to involve Pikachu because that pisses off the fans. But I think at the same time they should, because I think it should be time that we move on with the Pikachu fan base. I mean, we get he's the face of the of the Pokemon company, but frankly, I just you know sometimes you want to evolve into a Raichu, just move on already. Mm, yeah, that's true. And also, I always wonder why don't they ever mention the pre evolutions, the Pichus, Eagle Buffs, uh, Mine Juniors? Like they forget those Pokemon. Yeah, I have no idea. Like, start Pikachu off as a Pichu, and then it worked his way to become a Pikachu. You know, I don't understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it happens, you know. We'll see. I'm sure in the future they'll give us, like, different options, different things. Oh, yeah, one more one. Um, uh, Electivire. Oh, and, Ooh, and, 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 oh and, Ma and Magmar. You know, like the buzz of Magmar stuff. Uh, Magmortar? Like yeah, that'd be, yeah. yeah, that'd be cool. Scizor! Yeah, there's so, there's so many avenues they can uh, go. <laughs> it makes my mouth water. Metagross! Oh, yeah, man. Heracross? Ooh, Heracross. Yeah, I like Heracross. You know, there's a lot of different routes they can go with this, and it, it'd be great for the fans. There's so many good Pokemon. How can they all screw this up? Uh, I, I, pretty, I don't think they will. I know. I mean, the sad part is they, that Pokem, te uh, sorry, that Pokemon tournament thing, that mm -hmm. thing, that thing died off like quick. When they brought it to the Switch, they never even updated it or add more DLC. They just said, "Hey, we brought this to the Switch." Then we're done. We moved on. Here's I mean, you know, like uh, I wish, you know, the game could have been bigger. Like, you know, like um, what was it gonna say? Um, the game, like Splatoon, is bigger for for Christ's sake. It's already on his way for his third game around the moment. Yeah, it's very popular. Has a big esports scene. So, I mean, it is what it is. I, I don't know, because I feel you ever notice that the Pokemon tournament, you know, Game Freak always tends to, like, have the best Pokemon games, but they tend to forget them, and they just move on for other games that never really adapt further to the games they ever made. Well, like, imagine if we got, like, Pokemon Go on Switch. That would be also very interesting. That'd be hilarious, but how's that going to work with the Wi-Fi? Uh, I guess you'd have to do a mobile hotspot. That's going to be the issue, though. Yeah, most definitely. But, you know, they give us that. Um, it, it, what was I going to say? If they gave us... Um, like, they could do that. They could give us Call of Duty Mobile. Like, there's a lot of games that they could, you know, give us. Um, more Pokemon stuff for free. Dual Links. But, Dual Links, yeah. There's, there's a lot of different routes you can go with this. I, I just hope that um, because I know they don't have the mobile game for Unite out yet, because I know they're still mm -hmm. focused on the Switch. That yeah. If you get the Switch, that I hope that all your memory does go to the mobile phone, so you don't lose it. The same thing you do with Pokemon Home, because that way, like, you don't lose all your memory. You don't have to restart a new account and all that stuff. That you keep leveling up on the go. Mm -hmm. And then if you like, you delete the app because it was too much memory. You don't play it for a while, but you want to get it back. You don't lose your memory. You just you bring it back. The same thing you do with Pokemon Go. That's what I do. I don't lose all my memory. I still keep it around as long as I have an account linked to it. Mm, that's true. Okay. All right. Let's go to our next topic. Our next topic is the announcement of the World Championships in the Digimon TCG. Also, on a side note, since we're getting the webcam regionals um, all this month to coincide with that, um, basically, they've all kind of sold out except for TAC that hasn't put up theirs yet. They went very quickly. They were put up yesterday. They're, like, almost all gone. So the Digimon TCG announces it's... It's a very big announcement, so you could already tell that this game is very popular and going in the right direction, that they already announced a World Championships. And keep in mind, they have hinted this for Dragon Ball, but Dragon Ball has not gotten a World Championship yet, which is very interesting, Kevin. So, you know, this was a very big announcement. They announced um, Store Championships as well, 
like what DBS has for Digimon now. So, it, 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 more or less, the whatever one has, the other one's getting, and stuff like that. But the very big announcement, you know, which is gonna coincide with this and probably be like our final topic. There was a lot. The the there was a lot of online simulators announced this week. Digimon said that they're getting an online simulator for their game, and Yu-Gi-Oh got Master of Duel. So, you know, it's great that they announced the World Championships for Digimon. It definitely needed the games going in the right direction. But is it fair, going to basically our last topic, is it fair that Digimon gets an online simulator before Dragon Ball Super? Well... I mean, fairness, the fact that Digimon's now become the most popular game, it's already receiving, it's already on its fourth set, correct? Uh, we're heading into BT5, like next weekend will be pre-release for BT5. Okay, so, so we're, yeah, so we're entering 5. So, yes. the fact that the Digimon community is doing a popular time more than the Dragon Ball community ever since, like, set 3 came for them, and it was doing, and it got, like, it's like half and half, like, of like, uh, which is right, which is wrong, because of how like, the game plays ever since the, the release of overall. For Digimon, on the other hand, they're taking their time. They're not rushing. They're not copying other games. They're making, they're trying to be creative on their own. And they're standardizing having more people, including some former Dragon Ball Super players or current Dragon Ball Super players, to switch out and play out the Digimon game to see how it works. And later on, mm -hmm. some of the currents will later be, of DBS will later become the currents of Digimon. So Bandai is doing an excellent job providing the Digimon world, and they know that it's been so popular ever since the release because people have been dying to see this game come to the U.S. Now people are, are seeing this game having its chances to receive it. Dragon Ball by, the by, um, by sales, it's I believe it's fifth right now by this month. Like it, it, it or it's somewhere it's somewhere in the top. Like Dragon Ball was like near the bottom. Well, I guess that means for the fact because you're seeing Dragon Ball being repetitive over and over and over again, like we mentioned before in our previous episodes. Uh, Dragon Ball has been a lot of fun, and Dragon Ball has been doing a lot of great things. It's been around for so long, you know, besides the card games, it's been doing all these simulations, all these style of games, and yeah, it would be nice to see the card game get a simulator. But I think Digimon's finally can make it its big time. Not only with the anime um, reboot, so the card game. And this, and this chart, not to interrupt you, because I just looked at it, right? Um, Magic was one, Pokemon was two, Yu-Gi-Oh! was three. So the big three is the three. D&D was four, but we don't count D&D. That's not a card game. Flesh and Blood was five, and Digimon was six. So basically, Digimon is top five in well, card games. Well, actually, I spoke to one of my uh, associates yesterday. and okay. Oh, tell so, me more. So... Magic the Gathering has now been doing now Dungeons and Dragons style. They're coming up with new ideas for the for the game to be more interesting. So now they're they're combining other art styles to provide to place in the game. So now there's a Dungeons and Dice uh, standard, but and they and he also informed me that future they're gonna have Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. So if anyone who's Hello. a huge fan of Lord of the Rings, you can go ahead and try to set your pre-orders on. The Magic Gathering sets for their styles of Lord of the Rings, so now you can play like all your favorite characters from the movies. Um, so oh, that that that's neat for D and D to do that. I just wouldn't normally think that that's like a TCG product. Well, D and D's make has been around for a long time, even before Magic. Well, that's true. That's yeah, that's very true. You know, Magic its origin spawned from the D and D players wanting something. To take a break from D and T, and then they made a card game, and thus Magic was born. Well, because so. like, because yeah, D &D, well, Magic was created because of Dungeons and Dragons. Magic the Gathering was only popular because of it, and it's and it's only popular at number one because it's the oldest and still longest reigning card game of all time. The only reason Dungeons and Dragons only made it this far is because they started doing card game space on their games for like a couple of years. But that doesn't mean the fact they're doing a poor job, because you could still play either Magic or Dungeons and Dragons or both if you if you so choose to provide your the entertainment for yourself. Just make sure that you save all your money and don't waste it on too much. You know, take your time and enjoy the games, but don't don't. Oh well, yeah. I mean, it's it's a big deal, but you know, did you, if we just take the indie to the side, right? Like Digimon yeah. being fifth in card game sales and Dragon Ball Super is dead last at tenth. And the fact that Digimon is getting an online simulator, it's kind of, you can, it, I think the damage is kind of done if 
will we really get like what Yu-Gi-Oh just got in Master Duel, an online simulator fully? You can play online with the cards and all that stuff. Because Bandai did give us a webcam client that's also coming for um, Digimon. And I believe Dragon Ball Super might have tested that out as well. But if they get that first, Kevin, I think the damage is done. I think that for the Dragon Ball players for the last two, three years asking for that and they give it to, to Digimon, their own IP, which makes mo the most sense, right? They're going to push their own IP more. So it'll be, it'll be interesting because... I, I just think it'll make the Dragon Ball Super player salty at the end of the day. I think at the end, Dragon Ball is, like I said, I gave it to 20 sets, but if, if it doesn't survive by around the 20th set, that's it. That's my prediction. So th if this simulation comes to Digimon, not only this salts the players, but I think the team, they're gonna, I think the community is either going to keep, so they're going to try supporting, but if they don't try anything else, they're either going to switch to Digimon, switch to a different card game, or don't even, or just quit card, or just quit the game and don't play card games ever again for good. That's I mean, because like you could keep it alive for competitive events and all that stuff, but like that, you're not going to get a big crowd on that. Um, you're just going to always maintain whatever size it is now and just maintain that. You know, we're entering set um, 14, I believe, and then set 15, they've already, um, and the distribu distributor notes for uh, GTS have already revealed some stuff. So there's six sets to go, Kevin. We'll see how far, you know, what DBS will respond with. They just, and the interesting is thing is, is that Dragon Ball Super just got the, um, um, Digimon's had this since it's come out, even in Japan. They, that to show videos with the developers, um, showing cards, talking about the game and stuff. Dragon Ball just got that, like, yesterday. Like, that was also kind of, like, as somebody that plays both games, I was just like, wow. It took Dragon Ball Super that long to get something Digimon had from day one. So, I mean, I don't know. Um, it's it's very interesting. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh getting a fully automated uh, online sim, a real one that's on all platforms. You know, uh, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, um, Xbox S, mobile, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Very very good for the Yu-Gi-Oh community. I was very happy for them Don't seeing forget, this. Yeah. Don't forget Xbox One. Oh, I did say that. Oh, okay. I did say that. All right, then okay. I think my mind just blank. Oh, um, and I believe it's also going to be on the Steam console that's coming out as well. Yeah, it says Steam. I don't know about Steam console, but let's see how that goes. Cause I, remember I need that Steam deck. I need it. I need it in my life. Wait. Noel, did you Noel just... is here. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Noel, I make nowhere. It... Exactly. I thought this was a two-man power trip episode. How the fuck? It is. is. It, it is, but, you know, Noel burst in and makes it three-man. But how, anyway, how did this... I've turned it into a triple threat match. Let's go. How did this cuck get into the channel? Security! Amen. Amen. I am you the know. security. Loma. So, uh, what do you think about uh, Digimon being uh, technically... Uh, they're six in sales, but I'm not counting D&D, so fifth in TCG sales. And Dragon Ball Super is dead last at 10th. No. I think it just says a lot about how much effort Bandai is putting into Digimon versus Dragon Ball, um, and how how um, little effort they're trying to bring back the community after uh, COVID hit because the the community was was big and strong, and then COVID hit, and now and, it uh, just seems and now and now like ever since then it's just been withering away. And I mean, it's, it's it's finding all that they that they come out that they came out with Digimon like that's okay like there's nothing wrong with that, but the fact that they're, they're putting full strength into Digimon and they're like just like ah oh, Dragon Ball who cares about that that's that's what it feels like. I mean, well, as um, I was stating, since the whole topic this week was online simulators, right? Um, Digimon announced their world championships, as I was just p talking about. I don't know if you heard. And um, so we're getting webcam regionals, right? Mm -hmm. For all these events. And they went on sale yesterday. They all sold out except for TAC, um, which has not gone up yet, um, which is amazing. Um, the Carta sold out in 50 minutes. And the other ones took about maybe 
an hour or two and they were all gone all full at 256 for those type of tournaments but and these announcements they they said that um they're making an online fully simulated game for digimon which was the biggest news that nobody was talking about and uh so i was just saying i think the damage is done if that's a real full-on simulation and dragon ball got nothing yeah so i mean you also have to put into consideration that um dragon ball isn't their ip they don't fully own dragon ball which well, is i mean cool. i said, I said but, that but like I <laughs> another thing too is that they've had what four years four or five uh, years set 15, set 15 will be the four year anniversary because they're going to have four secret rares in that set yeah so they've had four years to be able to get through all the logistics and all the legalities of being able to make an online client for dragon ball like come on bro and we, we've been wanting this for how long and i i could tell you that uh, P, uh pbg was pushing for it too like come on man like you know. yeah i mean client online client for digimon yeah they can do that whenever they want because they own everything about digimon mm -hmm. but the fact that the fact that you're coming out with a digimon one first come mm -hmm. on dude. i, I just, love you bandai that, like that's I, that's I, just I, I, that's that's like them slapping that that's like them slapping us in the face and spitting on us <laughs> Uh, I don't know if I gotta edit that out, you know. I want Bandai to love I us, mean, you know. I mean, no, you know. well, he's not saying it in a bad way, but what he's he's just saying that Bandai insulted the Dragon Ball community for doing that and, and just. Oh, know, well, it it's chance. really gonna make them uh, salty, and uh, some people may be up in arms about it. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for the Digimon, and I hope it's something similar to what Pokemon has. And if it but, is, that's a whole. I mean, I have to agree with Noel on this one because. It's kind of not fair that the community's been around for four years and and Digimon's only been for like half a year. How come they didn't Dragon Ball didn't get theirs first? And I, you know, I'm just wondering. Mm -hmm. like, in a way, Bandai, don't take this the wrong way, but I thought you guys do try to listen to the community. I mean, the community's been asking for this for a long time. You could have just done both if you wanted, but I'm just saying, like, why didn't you just do both or do one of them at a time? Or at least, or at least come up with an explanation as to why you haven't done it for Dragon Ball. Like, hey. There are legality reasons and all sorts of th th reasons I mean, as to why we can't do it. They're on board with Untapped and Octagon having Digimon and Dragon Ball because they weren't shut down. They shut down a bit nerd for Digimon so quick. I mean, part of it too is he was taking Patreon money, and that's a no no. Can't can't make money off of things that's not yours. Yeah. But the fact that um, this will beg the interesting question. Will they go after tabletop in those simulations? People say no because it's super hard because it's like in a, in a file or something. But we'll see. You know, I mean, I think Untapped and Octagon are always safe. They Bandai knows that that ex those platforms exist and they use them. Um, well, I don't know if I know PPG under tournaments during the pandemic. They had those, and I just don't remember if they're Bandai events, but they know they it, they know they exist. It's not like they're dumb or anything but um i will say this though i rem um the a bit nerd when it was for the digimon community and it was active it got people into the game it got people playing the game it really helped the growth of this game so um and the fact that if they get a real one i think that's just gonna launch the game i really think this is bandai's pokemon like i think it's it's easy to play hard to master it's very friendly you know there are a lot of effects now but still like it's not intimidating and it's digimon and people love the digimon uh, uh card game and they love the anime so i don't know do you base I, I'll... but do you base this <laughs> digimon uh card game from like the original pokemon style game no no it's 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 based off the chrono clash system basically chrono clash was basically the guinea pig for this game because they just expanded on all that and made that game this but way better like it's just there's no clunky um extra deck cards or those big cards that you um like use in the game you know or there's no require. symbols or, huh? or need to require yeah you know there's no symbols everything has text everything has simple text at that 
Um, it's just it's just inherently better, in my opinion. Like I played Cl uh, Chrono Clash, I enjoyed it, but there were times I forgot what the, like the symbols meant and stuff like that. Um, so I think this is just more polished. Um, and I, you know, and and if Pokemon, if Magic Pokemon Yu Gi Oh, and now Digimon all have online simulators. Then that just means the only ones that don't have league, like I don't know if Vanguard has one or not, but it would just be Vanguard, Vanguard. has one for uh, the last version of Vanguard, not the one that the one that came out okay. for Overdress. There's an app so, and everything on it for, for okay. The... So basically, Super is the only one that doesn't have it. <laughs> of all major card games at this point. Because, you know, that was a big thing, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! making that announcement. I just wonder if they'll shut down, like, you know, uh, like, Dueling Book and, you know, the YGO Percy with Lynx and, you know, all these simulators now that they have their own. That's its own conversation, but I think these companies want to protect their IPs and make sure, like, hey, look, you know, we have fans that want it, so we'll make this. And I think it's in their prerogative to make ensure that their IPs are protected, so... They're gonna start acting like like Nintendo. Anything that has to do with anything of their IPs, shut it down. Oh man, burn it down. And then Seth Rollins comes out. No, but it's, anyway, it's it's holy Seth Rollins. I mean, yeah. I mean, the architect, yeah. But it's still the it's fake. Still. The fake Jeep is. Oh no. I mean, yeah. I kind of want the gimmick to change but that's not the point anyway yeah because there can only be one jesus in wrestling we saw him on fighter fest Ooh. Yeah, fighter fest one but um so it's a it's a very exciting time the digimon tcg um the game the, the game is selling faster than dragon ball did games blowing up faster than dragon ball did i mean i just think this uh just very good things for that game's future you know, um, all the in real life Gen Cons both sold out already. I mean, like the events just fly. Amazing, amazing, amazing indeed. So, uh, anything? I mean, you know, we all played Yu-Gi-Oh. So, like, what do you? What are your thoughts on Master Duels? You know, um, I mean, they're getting Rush Duels on the Switch as well. So that's really cool. Testing out that format there. But what do you think of? Uh, their online sim. I thought it was really cool for what it was. Uh, I'm definitely gonna get back into Yu-Gi-Oh now. <laughs> well, you your, see, playing your little the power of the, monarchs. The power of the online simulator, Kevin. The power. I mean, I just play Yu-Gi-Oh for fun. I think Yu-Gi-Oh is just the only one I can only talk more and more. Even when I stop playing, I and I just shit on what's going on currently. It's the only thing I still play because it's it's kind of me, the only the only card game I can understand more. It's how I play it, how I can provide the even though it's the one even though it's the most complicated one. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Of course. Uh, yeah. Of course, yeah, I enjoy it. I saw the 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 trailer for the Master Duels. It actually looks not bad. I like how you got to see Pot of Green on the side, so I'm like, yeah, Pot of Green's now gonna be my, my name at my main avatar. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, they oh, try to they're you bet Pot of Green's gonna be my avatar. But who is the real Pot of Green? Correct. The answer is Stevie. Uh no way. And you know, Master Duels is an exciting game to come out. The fact that it's coming out for all platforms is pretty interesting. If they could do also, like I told Gio earlier, where they do the same thing with Unite, they, you can add all your memory from the Switch and you can add it to your mobile phone with like a certain code so that you don't have to recreate another account. You could just like continue on. That would be mobile. fantastic. Yeah, so that way you can continue on playing the games on the go while you're out and seven at home, you know, before you go to work or in between work or school. And then that way you can go ahead and, you know, level up your characters or collect collect more cards you need to provide for your main decks that you're creating so you can fight people online because that, that'll be great you know i mean I, I probably will purchase master duel um yeah me too because why not because why not a master duel huh i cut off buying master duel see 
see, see, this is the power of the online simulator. The fact that you got one, boom, people that may not necessarily play, hey, look, boom, you're back in the game. And and I think that's a shot in the arm Dragon Ball Super could use. Yeah, more like a shot in the foot, dude. I mean, they. I mean, it's a great game. Don't get me wrong. This new set looks fantastic. I'm just not sure how competitively viable that is. But you know, that's for another episode. But eh. you know, I just get. I just give it. Oh, here, I'll I'll give you your preview. Eh. It's. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know. Hey, the Jiren stuff looks cool. But you know. I mean, like I've seen the Jiren stuff like a thousand times. I, no, I, I mean, baby it, Jiren, I was like, oh my gosh, they did it. They finally made a baby Jiren card. Oh my god, dude, that will be that will be great. Let's go. Let's do that. Let's go. Um. So. What what yeah, did they what, what did they make a a boo Jiren card? Oh, I mean, they still have they technically not made a boo Nemba yet. Mm, yeah, they made boo Nemba as the secret rare. Remember? Yeah, they did. Uh, uh yeah, but nobody really considers it that. But that's so boo that's. Well, I mean, I only ask. what do they make Boo Baby? Or Booby? Well, actually, that's not for it. <laughs> that's not the Booby. <laughs> there you go. B U U B Y. B Booby. I, I feel like if they went heavy on the fusions in that um, one Dragon Ball game app, I forget what it's called. Um, what? The, t the like, tutorial? No. Oh, like, oh, you mean that, that DS game they, they used to have? That Dragon Ball no, Fusion no. game. No, it's a current app. There's a current Oh, game. Dragon Ball Legends? The one before that one. Oh, Dokkan. Dokkan, there you go. Dokkan Battle. I think yeah. like, Fusion like in Dokkan Battle. Bro, there are some cool fusions like Pan and Bula and uh, Frieza and uh, Cooler. His name is Kuriza and Kuriza. Brody and Goku. That's, that's Karoli. Like, Karoli. if they did that, I think the game would be amazing. Imagine if we got a set of all Gokus, Kid Goku, Adult Goku, Super Saiyan 3 Goku, Super Saiyan 4 Goku, GT Goku. I, that would just piss me off. UI Goku. <laughs> UI Goku, exactly. All, all Gokus it's... next to become one form of Goku. So I'm but, watching the yeah. trailer on Duel, on Duel Masters. This looks lit, dude. They try to make it more realistic, and I like how they when you when you when you do like a summon from the extra deck, you automatically just slam the cards on top of the fucking dual zone. Tell mm -hmm. it's, it's it's coming it's, out. Uh, they haven't said oh. anything yet, but they they say they were they they were doing like a talk about it from a year ago, which I didn't know, but now it's coming all over. So once this comes out, uh, Geo said there will be no more. Dueling books, there'll be no more. You go well, I, I, th I think they'll push for that because, like, they have their, their client, you know? So it just makes sense. I mean, if Bandai goes after one and then all of a sudden, hey, look, we got one, guys, like, why wouldn't Konami do the same thing? Oh, here's a question. Well, you think Konami would Yeah, just, Konami can take my money again. I want that online client. Let me ask you something. Would Konami, if Konami would make sure make your money's worth instead of like you trying to do like they do in Legacy of the Duelist or Duel Links, where you have to like buy off cards to create a deck, what if they actually give the idea that you could actually create a deck without purchasing anything? No, they wouldn't make any money off of that. I think what they should do is do what Pokemon does, where you have a QR code in each pack, and when you scan the QR code. It gives you those cards to your profile. Oh, yeah. So then what that does is it gives an incentive to people to actually buy products and to buy singles. Or what they could do is is that they, they allow you to buy singles at certain prices on the online client. So like commons can be a dollar, rares can be two fifty, um Well rares doesn't rares. exist anymore. Huh? Uh, I don't know if you heard this, but rares doesn't exist anymore. I'm just talking about for games in general. No, I know, but I'm just giving you a heads up. Moses told me that there's no more rares. They they took that out and they put in that stupid Starlight rare. Okay, whatever. So, uh, commons are a dollar. Uncommons are two fifty. Starlight rares or rares, what do you want to call it, are five bucks, and then super rares are like ten to fifteen dollars a pop. Um, Starlight rare is the highest rarity. Whatever, dude. 
I'm just telling you what it is. You've been out of the game for a while, so I'm just giving you a heads up, sir. I mean, you know, it's fair. You know, just giving a generic kind of sense of how the scaling would go. That makes sense. Also, on comments doesn't exist in Yu-Gi-Oh. It's just comments. Uh, every other game has uncommons. So no. I'm going to say uncommons, motherfucker. Well, there is no uncommons in Yu-Gi-Oh. It's comments. No more. It used to be rares, but no more rares. Uh, super rares, ultra rares, secret rares, and now starlight rares. So we're in agreement that these unsigned simulators for Yu-Gi-Oh! and Digimon is a very good thing. Pretty much. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I mean, mean, like, they can make secret rares 50 bucks. I don't know. Look, just, I know what you're going through. Yeah, you're just going to make a lot of money out of these cards. Pretty much. Yeah, and, and the fact that most of these things, like, I mean, the Yu-Gi-Oh! one you have to pay for, the Digimon's probably closer to being a free thing. Like, hey, it just expands the games, and it gives people uh, more things to do, especially since, you know, we're getting near of ending, trying to end a pandemic, so the fact that you give people an option so they don't have to go out if they don't want to, very good thing in my eyes. Yeah, pretty much. All right. Yep. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, pretty good episode today. Uh, do want to thank Noel coming out of nowhere. Amazing. And of course, Gio, with all the information we got, it was a good talk today. You can't see me. My time is now. But wait. We can't see him, but he sees you. Correct. I'm watching you. That's what the Undertaker told John Cena. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, so let's all go ahead and say adieu, bonjour, farewell, goodbye, mwah, and good night, bang. Alvita Saints. Alvita Saints, indeed. This is Fortress Striker, signing off. Mm -hmm.